everyone, welcome to my channel Crypto Cat Guru. In today's video, I'm going to share a quick update on my thoughts regarding the latest developments with Vivi and Ecomi. Specifically, I'll discuss why I believe Vivi still has a lot to prove before it can truly succeed. Plus, to get out of the Vivi bubble, you'll also get a sense of how other influencers on YouTube and Twitch feel about Vivi right now. So stick with me until the end of the video. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe down below. Let's jump into the key updates from the past weeks. First, one of the biggest headlines has been Vivi's recent hire of Ben Rose, a former leader at Binance. Ben played a crucial role in helping Binance thrive in a competitive market and he has deep expertise in blockchain technology and regulatory frameworks. This is actually exactly the kind of leadership Vivi needs right now as they continue to scale. Now on the second major development, the introduction of Omi to NFT by Stacker. Thanks to Dr. Profit, who was instrumental in getting this to market in a timely manner. I find this development extremely bullish. It addresses two critical needs for Vivi's growth. Strong global leadership and a tech platform capable of adding more token gate utility to Vivi's collectibles. So when I think about Vivi's leadership team, Ben Rose stands out as a global growth and cultural leader. Dan Brothers focuses on the execution for Vivi's platform. David Yu, of course, continues bringing new licenses and partnerships. And while Dr. Profit isn't officially part of the leadership team, his stacker company will be pivotal in enhancing utility for the Vivi platform. However, there's one problem right now. Many people don't fully understand Vivi's potential. The missing piece is still more token gated utility. Something that can bring real world functionality and value to these collectibles. I've been listening to the discussions on YouTube and Twitch and the sentiment is clear. People aren't seeing the full picture of what Vivi could truly become. Let's listen to Parallax, one of the biggest NFT influencers on YouTube. Welgy Shark, a big NFT whale in the Web3 space and a comic dealer interview on YouTube. And so Vivi, if you didn't know, they are a company that acquired a lot of licenses for a lot of IPs like Spider-Man, Batman, Cars, Star Wars, Marvel. So you name it, they got a lot of them, right? And so what I understand is I believe they bought all these licenses for cheap when nobody understood the power of NFTs. And then they were able to sell a bunch of them as digital collectibles with no like real value. And then I think they made over 100 mil from selling these collectibles. So the next thing they're doing is going to be this black pink one. I guess it's just like a digital collectible. Join Waitlist, collect. So if you hold the pink Venom card, which you have to collect all four poses, you're eligible to participate in a craft to purchase event for a next exclusive digital collectible. What does a collectible give you? Right, that's the question. So it's kind of like buy these ones to get the next one, right? I think the challenge here is like, it's not really Web3. I feel like they just kind of had the license and they're just trying to make money. Don't think they really putting into account of, hey, you know, these collectibles, do they have to be worth anything? They're kind of just trying to make as much money selling a digital product, kind of like someone would if they sold a figurine, right? But I don't see much effort when it comes to maintaining the value of that product, which maybe it's not their game, right? Because Vivi, they kind of just like spam basically NFTs and people just buy them, right? Because they use popular IPs. So yeah, I mean, it's a very interesting use case. So let's, I mean, I'm following along to see how it goes. Like if you see like, let's say Marvel digital comics number six you know you, you kind of see like they're just like selling the cover of these comics and different variations right and so is there any value to this possibly not but you know they buy the license and make money on that so it is what it is but uh yeah interesting indeed uh i mean they look really cool but what do they do right i mean it's okay if they are digital collectibles for the sake of being digital collectibles but what do they do so, you know, again, and the other the reason why I'm probably not going to buy any of these is because it started like a while ago, right? It started like a while ago. What? What the fuck? Damn! Uh, VV is, they license out to Marvel comic books and things like that. And, they'll, and it's just a way for Marvel to make... This is the simple... Yeah, okay. I'll get there. Okay. It's a way for Marvel to make money off of Fantasy 15 again because they haven't produced one in forever. The insane part to me is people will sell these for hundreds, thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars because they think it's equal to the original. Some examples from the community highlight the need for more innovative utility features like gamification or exclusive experiences tied to owning certain VV NFTs. This is where I think Stacker can shine, delivering token gated utility through rapid development cycles. Dr. Profit, I count on you.
In summary, for VV to succeed long term, the platform needs to continue building out its ecosystem, especially by adding more utility to its collectibles through the VVverse and token gated utility. Only then will people start to treat the full picture and fun behind these NFTs. That brings us to the end of today's video. Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe down below. Thanks for watching. See you until next time, your CryptoCat Guru.